Good morning. I'm Seth Ahrens, and I'm coming at you here from my office again today. Uh, we're rounding off week two of nine in our daily devotional through the book of Mark. Uh, we'll have Jimmy Johnson finishing up week two tomorrow. Uh, it's gone really quickly, and uh, I know that we've grown a lot from it. Uh, we have a, a chat group we have with us guys that are doing this, uh, and it's just, it's, it's been cool. I know that we've been blessed. We've grown. I just hope that you guys have too. Uh, I want to encourage everybody that is watching these, um, feel free to comment um, or reach out to us individually. We'd, we'd love to hear from you. So, um, yeah, uh, today uh, we're going to continue through a few more of Jesus' parables and talk a little bit about them. And, uh, Kind of take off where Alex left off yesterday, where he he uh, went over the parable of the sower, and uh, so let's begin with a prayer before we dig into that. Dear Lord, thank you again for all the blessings that you give us, both the ones that we see and the ones we may not have seen yet. Uh, I pray that you encourage those that are sick. Um, those that are out of work, for those that are struggling with depression right now as, as we work through these uh, current issues with the coronavirus. Um, Lord, we pray that you give us opportunities to shine your light through us and that we take hold of those opportunities. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So I tried to do something fun last week, um, kind of a goofball. Um, and I know it has its place and doesn't have its place sometimes. But acted all surprised that this was recording. Hopefully you got that I knew that it was recording. Um, but this week, I'm about to read what's titled Light Under a Basket. So as I dig in here, chapter 4 of Mark, verses 21 through 25, I'm going to turn the lights out on you. Are you ready? It's going to get dark. How's that? Can you see? Good. <laughs> All right. Mark chapter 4, verse 21. It starts. Also, he said to them, Is a lamp brought to be put under a basket or under a bed? Is it not to be set on a lampstand? For there is nothing hidden which will not be revealed, nor has anything been kept secret, but that it should come to light. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Then he said to them, Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. For whoever has, to him more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. I'm not going to continue singing. I know it would be fun to watch me do it. but <laughs> So what she said <laughs> is from Psalms 119, verse 105. It says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And that's exactly what this is here. Uh, looking deeper at this, uh, Jesus is the light. More specifically, Jesus is the word. And I think that the lamp here is the word of God, just like the seed in the previous parable. Uh, just like light illuminates the darkness and lets us see, uh, Jesus shines in the hearts of believers, which enables us to see the reality of God's kingdom. Uh, our mission is to be light bearers and uh, make sure that others can see Christ through us. We want them to see the truth of the gospel and be freed from the darkness of sin and deception. Uh, what, what things do you think you may be concealing that needs to be revealed? I know uh, some people struggle uh, with accountability. 
Uh, they need someone to hold them accountable. At, at our congregation, I know some of us guys have accountability partners, uh, which can be a really great thing. I, I would encourage that to find an accountability partner, to find someone that makes that, that holds you accountable and makes sure that you are uh, walking in the light, leading the life that you need to lead. And uh, I think it's really important to have that. So if you don't have that, I would encourage you to find someone you trust that you could have an accountability partner with. Uh, maybe it's a gift or service uh, that, that needs to be given to others. I think God gives us all talents and uh, he gives us those talents that, that we can love on others. And so uh, maybe it's singing, which I was about to do, but figured you don't want to hear it. Probably not this early in the morning. Anyway, um, maybe you're really strong. Like Alex from yesterday, he has those shoulders so that he can help you move heavy things. Um, but everybody has talents. Uh, so uh, make sure you're using yours uh, for God's glory to show the light. Let's continue reading now. Um, the parable of the growing seed. It's going to be uh, chapter 4 still, verses 26 through 29. And he said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground, and should sleep by night and rise by day. And the seed should sprout and grow. Uh, he himself does not know how. Um, for the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. In some ways, this parable expands on Jesus' teaching of how the good soil or uh, receptive heart receives the seed or the word of God in the parable of the sower from yesterday's um, devotional. Uh, the key here is that we can interpret the growth of the plants as the working of God's word in individual hearts. The fact that the crop grows without farmers, the farmer's intervention uh, means that God can accomplish his purposes even when we're unaware of what he's doing. Uh, in, in a way, uh, God uses his word in the heart of an individual uh, that's independent from hu human effort. And I say in a way because we still need to put forth our effort. I don't think we can just pray for something to come to be and put no effort into it. God knows our heart, uh, but we need to be faithful in sowing the seed, uh, praying for harvest uh, or others to come to Christ or for um, our heart to be fully in Christ and leaving the results up to God. It's really hard to do sometimes. We all, uh, we all like to have control, and so giving up that control and, and giving it to God is a really difficult thing sometimes. And maybe there you go, there's something for you and your accountability partner to work on together. Uh, let's finish up with uh, Mark 4, still, uh, verses 30 through 32. This is the parable of the mustard seed. And then he said, To what shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what parable shall we picture it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when it is sown on the ground, is smaller than all the seeds on earth. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all herbs and shoots out large branches so that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. So the kingdom here uh, appears small in the face of the world's political uh, and military powers and, and the issues that we see. Uh, the kingdom we see is only a seed, so it's not a fully mature shelter. Uh, the kingdom is growing, and it will be large enough to furnish safety and security for those who live in its branches, for Christians. The God who propels the mustard seed to its great growth is at work in his kingdom to do greater things than we could ever imagine. Um, that's all I have for today. I Again, I encourage you, if you take something from this, grab an accountability partner, right? Uh, 
Go out and be the light. Grow in your faith and grow God's kingdom. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day.